we would like uh, to introduce uh, Brooke Sampson. Brooke is a civil student of engineering, civil engineering at Queen's University and is the current environmental engineering intern at General Motors CAMI plant or CAMI plant in Ingersoll. At the plant, one of Brooke's most important role is to monitor and maintain Frank Mighty's growth on site. Please join me in welcoming Brooke Sampson. Hi, Brooke. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So I'll get started. Um, so yes, as you said, my name is Brooke Sampson. Um, I'm the current intern at uh, GM CAMI assembly plant in Ingersoll. Uh, so my presentation is General Motors of CAMI assembly plant, Fred Mighty's maintenance practices. Um, okay, so we'll start. So a bit about me, uh, I said my name is Brooke Sampson, um, environmental engineering intern at KME Assembly, and I'm in my eighth month of a 16 month internship. I'm studying civil engineering at Queen's University in Kingston, and I've completed my third year. And after this internship ends in August, I'll be returning for my fourth and final year. And I'm actually from Dundas, Ontario. So I'm actually living at home right now while I'm doing my internship. A bit about uh, GM CAMI. So the CAMI assembly plant is located in southwestern Ontario in the town of Ingersoll. This manufacturing industrial site is made up of 2 million square feet and is on 582 acres of land. The local watershed is the Thames River. On this property, we have a certified wetland of about four acres, and we have been Wildlife Habitat Council certified since 2011 with 13 on-site projects. Uh, we've been gold certified since 2015, and in 2018, our Fragmites initiatives, which I'll be speaking about today, uh, were specifically recognized for the recertification. The facility itself is currently producing uh, the Chevrolet Equinox, and we'll be soon switching over to produce the EV600 in the end of 2022 and EV400 in the end of 2023, which are both completely electric delivery vans. Uh, and in the top right there, you have a, a photo of the EV600, which we'll be starting producing um, hopefully this upcoming November. So why the Fragmites initiative was started at CAMI? So the initiative was started as a pilot project in 2015 when Fragmites were noticed on our certified wetland by an environmental engineer from another General Motors site. Uh, this began the discussion of what Fragmites really are and how they could affect the property and our wildlife habitats. Uh, this initiative was assigned to the interim with support from the environmental officers on site. So the photos here you can see, um, this is in the back of our wetland behind our facility. Um, some of the Fragmites that are growing there. And then this was a tool that we started using in 2015 that I'll talk a little bit more about um, in further slides. So this is our monitoring plan, how it got started. Um, this map shows the Cami property um, as the part of the 582 acres of land. 13 areas across the plant, which are labeled or numbered here, um, were identified as having Phragmites, and the four red circled areas are the most affected or the, the areas we found the most growth, um, and is where we actually still continue to monitor today. So these four red circled areas are monitored every two weeks um, from late May to early September. And three measurements are taken uh, in three separate areas in each of the red circled sections. Uh, so at each, lo each location, the intern, usually on the same day, will go to each of those locations. And we measure the number of Phragmites in a one meter square area. So that's what we call the density, um, the representative height of that area, and then the tallest height of that area. And that's all recorded. Um, and we do that three times at each of these four sites um, each two weeks. So in terms of our data management, um, each season, uh, the data collect is collected and recorded on a spreadsheet, which is shown on this top left um, in the blue. So that just represents one week of our data. Um, we have an area for comments where we kind of track if um, we see any new growth or um, wildlife or any other kind of like native species that we do want in the area. Um, and then each site location that we, we visit has a number. 
So um, at the end of a data session or season, uh, graphs and a report are produced. Uh, the graphs show the growth stages of the Phlegmites over the season and how they compare to other years. So the three graphs shown on the screen right now are just um, a sample from the 2021 season at our Headwall Bioswale. So you can see the average tallest height, um, which grew over the season. The average density was somewhat the same over the season with a little bit of a spike um, in early September. And then the average representative height um, at the Headwall's Bioswale, which also grew as well. Um, and then the report that we put together is an overview of the maintenance that happens each season and the trends found or any other important information or suggestions we get from outside companies. And then all of this, um, we use it for tracking, but we also use it to go towards a wildlife habitat um, council recertification every three years. So tracking over the years, um, as well as just the annual graphs that we put together, we put together, um, we update these graphs each year. Um, and so far we've done, been doing it since 2015, so six seasons. Um, so this is the tracking of each of the sites we go to. So the Headwalls Bioswale, the Powerhouse, the Wetland, and then our Southwest storm, Stormwater Pond. And on these graphs, we show the average representative height and the average representative density um, over those six year spans. So as you can see, it kind of started off um, in the middle range, I guess, for the height. And then we did have quite a big, big dip um, in 2018. And then since then, it has been going up. Um, the density seems to be going down um, from 2020 to 2021, which we like, um, but we do want to keep reducing that average representative height as well. So for mechanical control, um, annually, we maintain maintenance takes place to reduce the spread and growth of Phragmites. In the past, we've used herbicide springs and we continue to use cuttings. Um, herbicide springs are no longer used just to prevent contamination to our stormwater system. So that is um, something that was requested by the county that we no longer do springs um, because the stormwater does go out to the county eventually. Um, in the past, we worked with local conservative author conservation authorities to help us with the herbicide springs um, and the management and management plan and cuttings grew over the years. So more recently, we've moved to using contractor landscapers to help with the cuttings um, and the maintenance in our areas. So on the right here, you can see kind of what we've done over the past six years, um, starting mostly focusing on the wetland and the bioswale. And then as you can see, after 2017, the springs were stopped. Um, and we also introduced some work on the Southwest Ponds in 2017. And now in the past um, two seasons, so 2020, 2021, um, we did have some budget cuts due to the pandemic. So we really had to focus on which area was the most affected and what we could do the most with. So this past season, um, particularly we used the Southwest, or we maintained the Southwest Pond with some cuttings. Um, we could have done more. We, we, we wish we could have done more, but um, we did the best that we could with what we had. Um, and we did, I, I guess, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more about what we did in 2021. Um, so we did mowings using uh, grass trimming tools. We actually used a landscaping company that we use on site quite a bit for grass cutting and snow removal and everything. Um, and that was just due to scheduling and who we could, who was available. Um, the planning for this did actually start in April of 2021. Um, and it was actually quite difficult to work with these contractors to get this done. So it wasn't actually until August that we they even were able to do the cuttings. Um, they started with a lawnmower, or I guess it was like a big industrial type lawnmower. Um, just trimming them down and then they realized that there was water in the pond even though that was obvious um, from the start uh, and so they had to switch to using um, weed whackers that had metal attachments um, we tried our best to inform them of all the precautions to take especially with cleaning um, 
the tools after after using them and going to different areas and then making sure especially to be picking up all the seed heads and disposing of them properly because this was um, in August when the seed heads were quite large um, and obviously if we kept those everywhere they would just grow new phragmites and it would all be pointless um, so even after this was all done uh, we only were able with five day, five full days of cuttings, we only got done about one third of the Southwest Pond area. And you can still see in like the second photo um, and the fourth photo that there is quite a few um, Phragmites left in the middle of the pond. Um, and this pond is actually usually like twice as big as you can see here, but in the past few years, since Phragmites have um, densified and spread over this area, it's been very clogged up. So um, we're really trying to focus on this area right now and we will be coming, um, will be in the coming year as well. Um, and then even after these cuttings, about one week later, you can see on the, the leftmost photo, it was pretty clear, but within a week, there were new Phragmites growing. <laughs> they were about a foot tall within a week. So we were surprised and um, a little disappointed about that, but we do need to further our um, methods and, and kind of update them for the upcoming season because um, we realize without pulling out the actual roots as well, um, that could be a contributing factor. And then also really trying to get it done before the seed heads come out. We also do some biological control. So in addition to cuttings and our past springs, informal spread of cattail and milkweed was continually completed each um, spring and summer in order to promote growth of native species in the Phragmites dense areas. So you can see on the left, um, some milkweed seeds that were collected and spreading in the area of the Southwest pond. And we also did that in the wetland. Uh, we have cattails in the ponds. And then on the very far right, that's when the milkweeds were actually spreading themselves in the fall. So some monitoring photos we have um, on the far left, you can see this was the southwest pond we recently cut this season and some of the new growth that's already started. Um, the kind of box like wooden structure tool thing um, in the middle is what we used to use for our measurements. Um, so the intern would bring this out every every two weeks and that's how they would find the uh, one meter square area. We have since gotten rid of this just because um, it's hard, especially when the Phragmite is getting quite tall to get it around everything. You kind of, it just doesn't any, end up working um, when they're quite tall. And uh, we usually go into the water as well. Um, so it's a little hard to maneuver with this thing in the water. Um, the far bottom left, you can see some cuttings that happened in 2019 in the Southwest Pond. Again, um, it looks pretty flat on one area, but the rest of it, there's still quite a bit. Um, so it's hard, especially um, with with time restrictions and budget restrictions to get everything done um, since we do have it like very, very dense in this specific area um, and really we've been quoted thousands of dollars to get it all done and it just hasn't happened so far. Um, and then, yeah, I guess, again, the the far right two photos are also, this, also the Southwest Pond um, before and after cuttings. So some key learning outcomes that we've had so far with this project. Um, Phragmites can obviously dominate over other native species, and it's really important to promote native species growth in Phragmites areas, especially after cuttings. So going in after those cuttings and planting seeds or planting small plants, um, bringing them from other areas that we have like dense, we have tons of milkweed in other sections of our plant that we want to bring to those Phragmites areas. Cuttings and other maintenance should happen before seed heads grow to reduce spread of the seeds. Um, it's really important because even if you're trying to collect them all, like they fly everywhere. So um, they, they can still spread even if you think you're collecting as many as you can. And then Phragmites can spread and populate through their roots as well as their seeds, which is something I actually learned at one of the uh, Ontario Invasive Plants Council um, workshops in the spring, which was really informative to me. Um, and yeah, so on one route, you can have many, many Phragmites plants growing up um, 
So it's really important if you're going to properly get rid of the fragments to take out the root as well. Um, and then it's also vital to clean all tools and materials used around the fragments, especially in the seeding seasons and after cuttings to reduce spread to other areas. So if you're going to use a shovel to dig one out, you should make sure all the seeds are gone and um, clean it well so that if you use a shovel somewhere else, you don't spread fragments to that new area, as well as just like gloves or your, even your work boots, uh, making sure they're clean before you leave the area. And then also, so part of our um, internship kind of situation is that there's a four month crossover. So I'll be training a new intern from May to August. And in that time, in that crossover time, it's really important that the outgoing intern really shows the incoming intern how important fragments are, try to get them going to workshops and doing their own research and making sure that they're very aware of um, what we've already done in the past and how we should be moving forward. Um, and then as well, time management. So even though we started the uh, quoting for this year in, in April, it took until August to get everything going. So uh, really starting very early to try and get this going, uh, especially in our big corporate world at GM, it takes forever to get um, quotes, organizing and purchase orders to go through. So yeah, that's that's everything I have so far uh, right now. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask right now or you can come find me later uh, or you can even email me if you have them after this session. Um, but that's everything for now. Thank you. Um, thank you, Brooke. Thank you for that um, great presentation. Um, a question, how did you dispose of the seed heads and cuttings? Yeah, so we... Um, we have a resource manager on site who deals with all of our waste management and she brought in a large um, shipping container and then all of the the cut fragmites and the actual seed heads went into there and then they went to an approved um, composting site i can't remember what it was called but we, we made sure that they dispose of the fragmites properly so that they they don't kind of spread where on like farms or wherever they're going um, but they were all collected into this ginormous bin to kind of dry out before they uh, were taken off site. Awesome. Great. I see there is another question, but I think in order to keep us on time and you said you are staying, so you'll be around. Yep. People can yep. reach out and find you. Um, and again, thank you. This is a great example of corporate responsibility, especially when it comes to frag. So thank you for sharing yeah. today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you.